we have taken the two larger pauses representing the total size of the image and used them to center the image on the platen, lining the type on the center line. And the top positive will be removed, the bottom positive is taped to the platen. Now we're going to use that positive to line up the first screen in the press. As long as the channel clamps that hold the screens are equidistant from the center of the rotary portion of the press, registering that first screen to the positive is really easy. All we're doing is moving the screen left or right until the image in the screen matches the positive. And then we tighten the screen in the press. And next I have taken the second positive and taped it over the first in registration. And so that I can see the second positive clearly, I put a piece of white paper between the two positives to highlight the positive on top. Next, I'm going to register the screen that was made from that, this second positive to the second positive. And of course, that will be an exact registration also. Or putting down a third or subsequent positive, remove the second positive. So only the first positive is still on the platen. Then lay the, second, uh, the third positive on top of the first in exact registration and again slide the paper in between the two positives. The reason you, you do not want to stack up positives and only at most have two down is that if you stack them up that will adversely affect your color registration. So for high quality work only deal with at most two positives. The onesie is now loaded and ready for printing. So let's take a look at the press and the setup we have here for printing. We have a four color press set up ready to print and you can see the four screens. We're going to print in a sequence of light to dark. So the first color down will be yellow and so forth and the last color will be black and that's because it's a white colored garment. If we were in a dark garment, the color sequence would typically be the reverse. You would print first with a dark color ink and work your way to light. Those are the general rules. Now there are exceptions. If you're printing 3D ink or puff ink, those would be printed last. In this particular case, we are not doing either of those. And also, if you have a color that takes up very little uh, room on the, uh, this very small part of the design as opposed to other parts or large, you might choose to print the large uh, images last. You'll also notice we have a flash dryer here because we always have a flash bar dryer nearby but we're not going to use the flash dryer in this case because we're going to print wet on wet. We can do that because the screens we're using are very high mesh count. When we print with 230 or 305 mesh, in this case it's 305, 305 threads per linear inch, the screens release very little ink and therefore the risk of one color bleeding into another is remote even though the colors but register. They're actually touching each other and of course we're relying heavily on the fact we're using the Newman screens where the mesh is super tight. That mesh is not going to dance in the frame. It's going to always come down to exactly the same spot. Our images are totally repeatable. So no flash dryer we're going to print faster by printing wet on wet. And then to the right, you, you can see we have a conveyor dryer. So as we pop those onesies off the platen, we drop them on the belt and keep on going. That's the way we get the highest productivity. Now, what's next? There's the finished product. Four colors and exact registration, all but registered. Printed light to dark, so it's yellow, then orange and green, and finally black. So that's how we print a multicolor job. Printing multicolors is really pretty simple if you have the right equipment, which means you need to have a real tight screen. That's why we only recommend the Newman screen. It's the best. And we typically use capillary film, but sometimes we use liquid emulsion. Capillary film gives you a little bit sharper print and gives you a lot of other advantages. But in any event, that's a choice that you can make. You can go either way. And then, of course, you need a platen that doesn't flex. You need a machine that's absolutely rigid, or you won't be able to hold the color registration. If you have any movement in the machine, in the screen, in the platen, 
then those little circles that were in the design will be overlapping. You'll have gaps. You won't get that perfect registration. You'll probably be flashing between colors. You'll be doing other things to try to cover up the fact you don't really have the right setup. And if you do have the right setup, then you can print faster, for example, eliminating the flash curing, which is so important. And also, it, it, you end up with a softer print, which is what we have with one hit with the squeegee, very light hand. And I will tell you that many people that I've uh, witnessed print over the years, thousands actually, as a general rule, women are better printers than men. And why is that? And the answer is because they don't print with force. When they put that squeegee down, they do not bend the blade. If you see somebody printing and they're bending the blade, they're applying too much force and they're splattering the ink. Well, if you splatter the ink, then those concentric circles we saw are going to be bleeding into each other. So you need a light hand. The best printers, male or female, print with a very light hand and they don't rely on brute force to get the ink through the screen. So those are sort of the basics of um, printing. Build yourself a screen registration guide, get set up, and get going. That's where the money is, and if we can help, we're here for you. Give us a call. We'd like to hear from you.